the thing that everybody doesn't know is that we are often naked together in the mornings. That's true. Via selfie. Andy and I take our ugly selfies in the morning and send them to each other uh, uh, very often. So um, this is nothing new to us. Except, except for you have makeup on. and I have makeup on. Right. done and I have my glasses on. So. There. So. Oh, wow. Well, Sherry, have I got the genitals for you? <laughs> if you've got an itch, Andy Vargo will scratch it. <laughs> Scrutiny with Sherry and Andy. I'm Sherry Hardman. This is my good friend Andy Wait. Virgo. <laughs> yeah, and we're here to discuss uh, a lot of topics with our own special brand of scrutiny. I don't know what topics because I'm not prepared today. So let's just find out. You know what? I didn't come up with a topic. I know we're going to find out. We always we don't run out of things to talk about ever. But I was busy um, putting a little game together. We're going to play later. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. Fun. Yeah, it's my turn. It was my turn to finally come up with something to put you on the spot. So mm. I'm excited. Yeah. So, but Sherry, you've got some, you've got a busy calendar. What do you have coming up? Uh, well, tonight I will be at Tacoma Comedy Club hosting for Harlan Williams. Fun. Same uh, two shows tomorrow night, two shows Saturday night. Wow. Then Sunday I'm doing Boozy Brunch. I'll be hosting that at Tacoma Comedy Club. And Monday, we have our show at Odd Otter. Yes, that'll be fun. I'm excited about that. We have a fun, interesting mix of comedians. We have Barunji, we have Richie FJ, and we have uh, one of my favorite comedians uh, up from Portland, of the Real Hijinks. Yeah, that's going to wow. be a fun show. Um, yeah. I haven't seen Richie perform in a while or Hijinks, but I, I saw Barunji a month or so ago and it was just it's hilarious to see people that you've seen but then you haven't seen them for a while and i uh -huh. think a month ago was kind of the first time i saw him since covid and uh -huh. it's just you know it's neat to see people um where they're at and be like oh my gosh he's got some new stuff i haven't seen and his other stuff's even more yeah, yeah i saw richie at where was it that i was thinking about that i saw him and i was like oh man he was really freaking funny i was like i gotta get him on our show yeah, well, everywhere I see him, he's really freaking funny, but I'm just trying yeah, to... Yeah, he's, he's been around a long time. I mean, he's, I mean, at least... He's an longer. old, old man. He's been around a long time, so... <laughs> well, yeah, so, so that's time, exciting. But... And then, you know, then... Uh, is it next week we're doing Halloween, or is it the week after? The week after. The week after. And I might be Are you on... sure? It is yeah, it's the 28th okay. or whatever, 29th. Okay. I might be on the road next week. I'll have to let you know if we have to delay or something or do a weird timing because I am taking a little weekend getaway. Well, good for you. With, with my other bestie. <laughs> oh, your, your real life bestie. <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes I refer to her as my last sane ex. <laughs> 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 um, yes, Laura and I are going to do a little getaway. We've talked about doing the little retreat kind of getaway thing for three or uh -huh. three years now. And, you know, it's always summer gets away. It's like, oh, we were going to go camping. We were going to go to the beach. We were going to do this. And she had something canceled. And I was like, you know what? Let's just make it happen. And so I'm going to go hang out. At she's, the... an out she's an outdoorsy kind of gal. Are you going to yeah. be doing like outdoorsy kind of? We're, we're going to go to the ocean and do outdoorsy stuff at the ocean. So oh, that's that. cool. Yeah. Well, cool. So, all right. So we'll find out later, like when you're leaving. So yeah. cool. And what do you have coming up? You know, I've, um, the, the show, the comedy shows that I have coming up aren't until November. I have, uh, some things I, I've got a, I just booked a workshop that I'm doing a, a private gig about change. And so that's just really exciting. It's not until January, but it's recently booked. 
Right. So I'm just really excited about that. And unfortunately, I've gotten so busy with the private stuff, which is cool. That's what I want to do. But I can't go, oh, hey, come to this thing. Right. Um, so yeah. but I'm going to be doing uh, in November, our next, uh, at our first Toastmaster meeting in November, I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to do a mini version of one of the workshops that I'm going to be giving. So that's going to be kind of fun. And people are always welcome to come to those as guests. Um, so that's going to be fun because I'm, uh, well, I don't really need to practice the workshop itself. I have a couple of elements that I'm putting into practice that I want to try. And mm -hmm. I'm actually developing a whole new packet because one thing I haven't done very well with my own marketing was they say every time you're in front of an audience, you need to have them have something that they leave with, with your name. So I'm making sure I have those elements together. And I'm also working on an evaluation for the audience to give me where they also have the opportunity to give me their um, email address so that I can, you know, add people to my right. thing. So, well, cool. uh, I, I, so I'm excited to kind of use this as an opportunity to develop some of that stuff. So, so it's exciting. I just, I've got, things are growing, things are going the right direction. It feels good. It's a lot of work and I can't wait to have some things where I can say, Hey, come see me here. I've got a couple shows in November. I'll be excited to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of wanted to give a little bit of heads up about um, stuff for that we're doing at Odd Otter. Yeah, there's going to be some fun things coming up. Yeah, so um, in November, is it November? We're bringing back Unmentionables. Yes, November 22nd. Now, we're not doing the game show version. We're just doing, a, I, I don't want to call it dirty, but, you know, we're going to bring back dirty jokes. We're going to do a little a comedy, a risque comedy for adults. So we'll be doing that in November. I'm excited about that. Eventually, we will bring the, the game show back, but yeah. I wanted to bring Unmentionables back, and then I figured we'd have an Unmentionables version and then just a game show Unmentionables version. Yeah, so. I think that's a great idea. And um, and just to remind everybody, October, November are a little bit odd at Odd Otter with comedy because it's normally the last Monday of the month, but there's a Seahawks game the last Monday of the month, and so that's a little hard to compete with. So this way you can get your comedy one week and your Hawks the next week. So it's the right. second to the last Monday of right. the next two. And we'll share those dates when we get closer. And yeah. then in December, we have Nate Jackson. So Ooh, that's exciting. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. That's going to be fun. So, so a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. That's, that's a fun room. It's cool to see it grow. So. Yeah. All right. So what do you want to talk about, Sherry? <laughs> um, do you want to throw a topic out? I can throw something out if you I got no, I got nothing. I got nothing. Well, we want to hear about your trip to Vegas. That's for sure. I, yeah, I took a trip to Vegas. Um, I wanted to go see Beatles Love because every other time that I've gone, it's been dark and oh. they finally have it going again. And so uh, I met up with Michael Timont and brought him with me to see it. Mm -hmm. And he'd never seen it. So that was exciting. And it was good seeing him. We went and hung out and had dinner and uh went and saw the show yeah, he's a cool guy yeah so that was fun um it, i was happy to see that it was back and it filled my heart with joy mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> yeah and then i went to it looks uh, like how monotone you said that it filled my heart with joy <laughs> filled my heart with joy no but then i went to a show called the dirty at twelve thirty. okay i was wondering about that i saw you said you were going to dirty and i didn't know was that a dirty comedy show it's called the dirty at 1230. Yeah. Okay. And it's in a, a casino, not on the strip. And uh, there was a little fiasco there. I, it was nice. Cause I saw, uh, some, you know, some comedy peeps that I knew mm -hmm. got to say hi to them. And why I got to watch uh, Spiro do a set, but there's one of the comedians had some trouble that night. Let's just say. Mm -hmm. had a little too much to drink and really like had a major meltdown on stage oh wow and it was really uh interesting because there was uh there it was there was like it was kind of like a car wreck where there was like that fascination like you want to yeah. watch you want to slow down and watch you know but uh it was hor horrible to look at you know yeah right yeah it's, it leaves you not feeling good but you also Right. I want to know the end of the story but especially as a comedian it's like okay how is he gonna is he gonna pull himself out of this it was really mm -hmm. like 
how is he going to pull himself out of this? Or are they going to let him continue? Or are they going to come take him off stage? You know, so that was really yeah. interesting. And then there was a certain point, and I think I told you this, that I thought, ooh, should I get this on camera? Right, yeah. And then I just thought, no, uh, you know, I know everybody does that now, is they mm -hmm. want to get everything on camera and be the first one to put it up. And I just thought, that's a human being who's losing their dignity right now. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't want someone else to do that if, if it was reversed. If that was me up there, you yeah, know. Yeah, I, I think I remember. I think the way you said it to me was something about, you know, this person's like at their lowest point or a very low point, and I wouldn't want that. Yeah. On camera for if it was yeah. me. And, yeah. Yeah. That was a that was a very thoughtful, yeah. kind way to approach it. So. But so I kind of got stranded out there for a little while. There was no taxis available so i just had to gamble instead oh well and i saw wow. him yeah oh. i saw him a few hours later looks like they had gone and like went and got something to eat and he was surrounded by a bunch of people that were um trying to nurture him through it so that's well yeah. that's well, that was good yeah 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 because you, you worry when someone has a situation like that if they just go on into the night by themselves and don't have somebody kind of hanging out with them that, that's right scary. what's gonna happen yeah and yeah. then uh the following night i went out and did a little karaoke and uh are you still way too <laughs> many cocktails are you still hung over oh <laughs> uh, i'm good now i'm but, sorry uh, i just i was hearing from sherry <laughs> the day after and it was just oh it, it sounded painful oh uh, and 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 i and i still like this is gonna eventually become because i don't you know, I don't drink like that anymore. Like I'm too old yeah. to drink like that for one thing. And, uh, I, you know, like I barely <laughs> even remember half the evening. I remember falling asleep outside a dive bar in a like sketchy part of town. Oh, it just is not with good. With $3,000 in my purse and I'm just sleeping on my scooter. I remember a guy asking me, are you okay, ma'am? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just waiting for my cab. But then I... <laughs> I, I know he took me back. I, you know, I remember going back to the casino, <laughs> but I don't remember anything after I was back. And then I got up the next morning and I had a, a ticket, you know, from a slot machine. So apparently oh. I played some slots on my way upstairs and then yeah. decided, you know, so yeah. And I also, as you know, started a group chat <laughs> which was awesome because i got the pleasure of saying that you did and you're like no i didn't it's like uh yes you did I'm saying the, screen, yes. uh, the chat that you started but what i don't understand like first of all i made a group chat with you ken hamlet and rachel Jay. now yeah. you and ken i can understand because i talk to you guys all i talk to you daily right i talk to ken weekly Right. And, and I see Rachel at shows when I see Rachel at shows, you know, yeah. we, we never chat. I mean, not that I don't like Rachel. I, I know what you mean. She's just not in your daily chat circle. I, I get no, it. Right. And so all of a sudden it's like the three of you on a group chat, but you know, that's kind of a technical skill, not only to start a group chat, but to <laughs> name it as to name well. It also, please tell everybody what you named it. I'm so sorry, drunk, JG, whatever that, yeah, so. <laughs> and I actually, when I first thought, I actually had kind of the same thought that Rachel had said, which was that she thought, oh, what show is this group chat for? And I opened it and I thought, well, Rachel was on the last show, so she wouldn't have started a new one for the next show. <laughs> and, and it just, it was, and then I thought, and Ken's not coming to town, like, what am I, missing here it was just funny and so and what did i do just start it and then not say anything i think you started it? it and then you put a thumbs up or something like very oh. just like one little thing and i and i didn't see it till i woke up in the morning i was like huh <laughs> i know so now people are probably like oh sherry hardman's an alcoholic but i mean really like i think the last time i got drunk like this was that time we were on that uh camp out of a tommy's cabin oh yeah. What, two, two years ago or three? I don't know. Yeah, that was like three years ago at least. Yeah, so, you know, once every three years, I guess. Which was this time of year. It might have even been four years. Gee, I think it was at least probably three years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know. So that was okay, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad to be home not drinking now. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm glad you 
were able to wake up and get to the get to food first of all and then get to the airport yeah so everything worked <laughs> out but yeah that's good not gonna repeat that anytime soon well would you like to play a game okay i have a game and this is based on and i did clear this with sherry er earlier to make sure that uh, that this was okay uh because this is based on sherry's comedy because you do the thing called sexual mind reading mm -hmm. and i thought it would be fun you do that with audiences i thought it would be fun to do it here kind of the way you put me on spot with who's who and i'm like well i'm gonna give you your chance to do sexual mind reading for uh the show so um prepare yourselves um whoops let me go back to zoom i forgot i needed to do share screen oh we have comments I'm i thought okay to do it oh, here. oh is that me or that's you um, oh wait now kirk, hmm. kirk has said something uh let's see what kirk says before we do the show every time i show up early for sherry but stick around late for andy's sweet mustache wow thanks kirk <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome are the private shows on your andy fans <laughs> that's a good idea i might have to start something kirk, um, are you, is kirk flirting with you? i am dis maybe i am disabled from sharing my screen can you let me share? oh i'm so sorry that's okay there we go um anyway so i got to hang out with kirk yeah, Kirk's hey, I, your pictures looked a lot of fun. Looked I'm like sure he regrets it. I don't know. I, he got out pretty early. He was like, okay. Am, oh, look at her. Can you see? I see my boobies. All right. Let's see here. Should be. Uh, I tested this. Why is it not moving? Oh, there we go. Boom, 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 boom. Ooh, nice there graphic there. Look at you. Thought you'd enjoy that. Let's see if it'll go to the next. Okay, here's your first contestant for sexual mind reading. What is he like in bed? Yes. He's an athlete, first of all. Do you know who that is? Yes. Okay. I don't know much about him, but I do know who that is. Um, okay, the, here's the deal. Like when you have sex with an athlete, especially like, so I picture him like using uh, the bedroom as a workout room. Like, you know, <laughs> all like sex it incorporates push-ups and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> flexing, uh -huh. flexing and all that kind of stuff. So he's always got to be on top so he can do the, the push-ups. And um, uh, likes to do it in front of a mirror too, for sure. <laughs> so we can gaze at his muscles. But I, I'm sure he's fine in bed because he's cute enough that, you know, I don't really care whether he's good in bed or not. So there you go. All right. Ready for your next contestant? Okay. All right. Oh, that's Suzanne Summers. Uh huh. I did some flashbacks. <laughs> Wow. Oh, Suzanne Summers. Oh, well, first of all, oh, we know she's got that thigh grip from the thigh master. <laughs> so I bet she's got like a steel vagina, you know, like once you're in, she decides whether you're coming back out or not. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's it. But yeah, no, right. she, she's fun in bed. Okay. Oh my God, it's Adam Driver. I threw that in there just for you. <laughs> I've never seen his nipples before that I can remember. Well, Adam Driver is not, you know, <laughs> he's got the face that only a mother could love or women who've seen him do movies and play sensitive characters. That's why we like him. So <laughs> lucky for him, those kind of faces are uh, usually very good in bed because they've had to make up all their lives for what their nose looks like. So. Oh my God. 
No, I'm getting aroused. No, Adam Driver, I I know that he's got to be really good in bed. And just imagine, like, sitting on that face. There's a lot to ride. There is a lot. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving Andy the vapors. <laughs> right. He's not my heartthrob the way he's your heartthrob. Yeah, well. But that's funny. That's fine. All right, but I did find a nice picture for you to enjoy. Thank you. I appreciate that. Send that to me. Taylor Swift. Huh? <laughs> well, for sure, she gives really weak hand jobs. For sure. <laughs> And really weak blowjobs, too. I, and I like Taylor Swift, don't get me wrong. But uh -huh. a girl that looks like that and has looked like that all her life has not had to try very hard. So she's probably a pillow princess. And when she does try, it's very, um, she doesn't have a good grip. What's a pillow princess? Someone that just lays there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a pillow princess. Okay. Couple more here. Yeah. Who cares? I just want to find out. I got that line there, but no, that Justin Bieber. <laughs> um and he's probably quick, you know, he's probably kind of quick, but <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. probably disappointed. I'm sure he's disappointed a lot of women. Yeah. <laughs> Disappointing. Okay. Disappointing. Okay. I know. Nah. Not very exciting there, huh? All right. But he is cute, so. Don't you think? Yeah, he's cute. Depends on which picture you look at, though. I've seen, when I was looking for pictures, I was like, is that the same person? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get a good variety of people for you. Well, has Susan Boyle ever had sex? I mean, come on. Do we even know? <laughs> I don't know. Why would, how would I know? So, so, so let's imagine that she has. <laughs> yeah, no, oh. Well, she insists on keeping her flannel nightgown on while she's doing it, right? <laughs> All right. And then she says, like, oh, thank you, sir, for the sex. And then she, well, she puts a towel down first on the bed so there's no mess. And then afterwards, she makes you like tea and little sandwiches cut up into quarters. <laughs> you know, I think she could be a surprise screamer like her music performance. <laughs> no, there's no way. All right. Poor thing. I, I hope might... somebody bangs her. Maybe she doesn't like that. I don't know. I hope she's Ugh. happy. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure she's fine. Oh my God, Richard Simmons! <laughs> I love Richard Simmons. You know he would talk incessantly through the whole thing, for sure. <laughs> oh my God, he's like, shut up already. <laughs> he, 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 well, he likes to do it and just keep those, those uh, striped shorts on the whole time. Just push uh -huh. him over to the side. Oh no, oh he's, very, he's very enthusiastic. He's <laughs> bouncing around and he just won't shut up. He just will not shut up. <laughs> And he's like, we're sweating, we're sweating. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sure he's very encouraging, too. <laughs> uh, I think that might be the last one. Oh, no, there's one, another one. Oh, Lizzo. Oh, you know that girl's got it. She's beautiful. She has a beautiful body. And um, I'm sure she's kind of dominant. I'm sure she's a little dominant. She wants to make sure that they know who's the queen, who's the boss. She's mm. the boss in the bedroom. She's a boss bitch, babe. No, yeah, <laughs> she's cool. She likes to mm, she likes to be on top. She likes to tell them what to do. She's a she's a queen. All right. Mm -hmm. That wasn't very funny, but that's my take. I think that ends my uh, my list of Speaking people. Of pillow princesses, watch. there we go. So, uh, well, good job, Andy. Well, thank you. That was fun. Good job to you. That would put you on the spot. Oh, my stomach is growling. Let's see here.
hello to everybody that's watching yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that that's one of the fun things it's it's funny to watch you do that with strangers because um the the, the fun thing that when you do that on stage is that you watch it go around the room and you pick on people or not even picking on them but you're calling you know they're calling out and a lot of them are volunteering or whatever but then you're um you hear their friends laugh like just like you just pegged them with what their personality is and it's like you just know it's like oh i know God. it's it's got like it's gotten where it's almost like i'm just roasting people and i really did not intend for it to start out that way but mm -hmm. i don't know people have a lot of fun with it so yeah, I, I actually when I this was actually fun to come up with the list of people because I started writing our list and I had a couple people on there that I didn't put on because I didn't want to do all musicians or all one thing or the other. Right. And so then I mixed it up and added other people, but then I kept those people on a list for later. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so, and then afterwards, I was like, oh, I should add so and so and so and so. So I've got a, a fun list. I can't wait for you to uh, share about. Some of some of it is just research for me. Some of the guys, I'm like, okay, what is she gonna say? Yeah. Wow, this one. <laughs> Do I keep them on my <laughs> on my wish list or not? <laughs> oh, ah, well, that's fun. Hey, well, that was fun. Yeah. Yes, it was. All right. What were we going to talk about? Oh, we talked about possibly talking about Dave Chappelle's special, but I don't really feel like it. Do you? Uh, no, nah, it's that there were so many late. I watched it and I don't watch things. I don't I won't go into a lot about it because I don't really want to get into all the, the stuff about it. I just I don't watch things that are trending usually on purpose because I don't really care what is going on. That's like, oh, you have to watch this because it's what everybody's doing. But I watched it just because a couple things were asked specifically me about it and I was like well I'll watch it just to so I can you know yeah, have yeah. conversations if I need to but um <clears throat> yeah there were just a lot of different things and I had different opinions on it in different ways and you know but you know some good some bad some mixed so I think yeah. that, that would be hours to unfold <laughs> um, but one thing that I was uh, really dealing with this last week that I considered kind of talking about was uh you know how you like like how you really gauge how you're feeling about things because you know early on in the week and uh last week i was really kind of in a, a lull in some progress that i was working on with with business and what was tricky for me and this is it's frustrating because it's what i it's what I coach my clients through. Yet when I go to apply it to my own life, it's always the, oh, this is, this is what you're helping people with. Why can't you apply it here in your own life? Um, that's why I'm a coach and not a player. Uh, <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so one of the things that, that I had to really step back and notice is over the last year, especially my business has gone from here to here and then it's here, but in my mind, because it's not actively doing something to get to here right away, I feel like it's gone back down to here instead of really acknowledging, well, it's still here. And I feel like we can run into that a lot of times, even with comedy, where right. you have a weekend without a show, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, am, am I not popular anymore? And yet you could have every other weekend of the book of the month booked when that wouldn't have been the case two years ago. Right. And then all of a sudden we feel like we're an open micer again or something, you know? And I, and I and you had given me some advice too of like you know how do you kind of plan ahead to have some coping things in place so that when that does happen when you start to feel that way that you can bring your mentality back around to the right space because that was the thing that was really most disturbing to me wasn't the metrics I was looking at but why I couldn't shake the feeling of the lack of success right In reality there wasn't a lack of success I just wasn't feeling the way I wanted to feel mm -hmm. <clears throat> and go ahead did you come up with something for that like to yeah one of the things that I came up with was to um to write down my current successes and my current opportunities because if I as I list them out <clears throat> it makes me aware of just what's on the table right now and those things weren't on the table a year ago or two years ago and so right by sitting down and writing them out, it, it does two things for me. One is 
it's, it's a lot like writing a gratitude journal or writing a list of things you're grateful for in that you start to focus on what you have instead of what's missing. But the other thing it does is it focuses my activities and my mind on the actions I need to take. And there's actually, um, I heard this somewhere in a book, which I forgot about. It was either a book or a TED talk or something, but they were talking about the, uh, when we feel successful, the feeling of success comes in the pursuit of success. As soon as we achieve the success, we stop having the feelings that come with feeling like a successful person. So as soon as we stop doing the activities that make us successful, we actually start to feel like we're not. And so mm. um, it, that's, that's a lot to do with, it, it ties into why people feel imposter syndrome or they don't feel good once they accomplish something. It's because they've stopped being in pursuit of what they're working on. And that's where the actual good feelings come in. And that's why you see people who, no matter how big their empire gets, no matter how much they're doing, you know, now they wrote a whole bunch of songs, but now they're going to go play baseball and then they're going to go paint a Picasso type of painting and then they're going to write a book. And it's because they always have to be pursuing something because that's where that feeling comes from. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much out of greed. And so by, by creating that list, I'm, I'm creating that gratuity list, but then I'm also triggering myself to figure out what I should be taking action on. And then that action is what creates that feeling of success. And that feeling of success is what kind of makes that, makes you feel successful and realize that you have it again. So that's interesting. That's interesting. You know, one thing that I, uh, I told myself to do, and I just discovered it actually like yesterday, I had forgotten about it, but someone said, make a voice recording talking about all your uh successes mm -hmm. yeah i remember you talking about and, this yeah back. yeah so i <laughs> happened upon that it was in my voice recordings and i was you know trying to record a set and i was like yeah. well, i'm gonna listen to that and i started that thing like back like i talked about in the recording about how i started out as a welfare mom and oh, i went wow. back to school and I got, you know, got my degree and then I started working and I was with a man who told me I'd never be anything. And then I, you know, and mm -hmm. I just went through everything up to this point that I'd accomplished. And I, I felt a lot better after I listened. I was like, yeah, I'm a badass. Yeah. No, that so, is awesome. I, um, one of the things that my mentor had, had challenged me to do, and I still need to go back and do this, was to write out a hundred things that you've done that are successful, a hundred successes you've had. And he pointed out, did you learn how to walk? Did you learn how to ride a bike? Did you learn how to speak English? Like whatever, like it doesn't have, a success doesn't have to be a, you know, a monumental thing. Like we always think it has to be like, what are things that you were able to accomplish in your life? And, it, and if you go back and look at all the things you've done, you know, learning how to use a cell phone, those weren't around when I was a kid, you know, that was a new mm -hmm. thing, learning how to use a computer. Um, <clears throat> There, there's hundreds of things that we've all succeeded at and we don't give ourselves credit for them because they're just what we see as, as regular everyday mm -hmm. things. But I, I love that, that you went back to the beginning because, um, you know, I know bits and pieces of your journey, but not all of the details. And, you know, we don't know what's behind how people got to where they are. And, um, especially when we see people on stage or things, we know the piece they choose to share. And a lot of times that's a flash of where they're at in their life now. But, mm -hmm. you know, as comedians, we're not always going back 20 years and talking about, oh, in my childhood or in my first marriage or in right. whatever, this is what I had to deal with. Well, and even like, you know, I know very few people, you know that I'm dealing with some really heavy stuff right yeah. now. And I thought, you know, like if people were to see me on stage right now, they would not imagine that at all. And then I think, well, that's probably true for a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. we don't know what people are dealing with. This is like off the off the topic that we're on, really. But I mean, just being able to sometimes to get through a day is a success. Right. Or to get through a set or to get through a job or to get, you know, just mm -hmm. succeeding without falling apart some days is a success. Yeah, I <laughs> and that's actually the section I was just writing because I'm working on this new book about relationship changes. And the section I was writing was about um, 
kind of getting through. And what I was talking about is giving things time because when I was in the worst part of my divorce, I remember I would feel like shit all day long, all the time. And, you know, you'd like do something and you'd like be choking back tears here and there. And I remember getting to a point where it was like, oh, I made it through like most of a day. And then the next day it was like, oh, I made it through a whole day. And I realized that what I needed to do was track the space between breakdowns or the space between just that crappy feeling mm -hmm. because that's where the success and the growth was. It's like, oh, instead of it being two hours without breaking down, it was four hours. And right. maybe next time I can go four and a half or, you know, and there were some setbacks where you're like, oh crap, now I'm doing it again every two hours. But, you know, I might have a two day meltdown that, but then I might be okay again for four weeks. And then it's like, oh, now I have another day or two meltdown. But, but that growth is where it's like, oh, wow, I haven't, I haven't felt crappy for a week. I didn't even notice it. Mm -hmm. But what I used to do is I thought, oh, you know, I, I broke down again. Now I'm back to square one. I'm starting over. It's like, well, I'm not starting over because I'm not starting over at having that feeling 24 seven. I'm just right. having a bad moment because somebody looked at me wrong in the grocery store or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I think, but like you said, sometimes it is just, can I make it for an hour? Can I, can I get through until lunch break and I can go cry in the bathroom and eat a Hershey bar or whatever it is that I'm going to do, you know, <laughs> and then go fake it until the end of the day or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but whatever you got to do to just kind of keep getting to the next step. Mm -hmm. That's so you're right. right. We do just never know. That's right. Well, it sounds like you're, you're doing some, uh, you know, good work just with, well, with everything, you know, but uh, feeling uh, the feeling of success, it kind of reminds me like of um, how they say that uh, comedians, like famous comedians, like if you watch any show where they're all sitting around bullshit, they all say that like, oh, their open mic days were the, like the best days of all. Yeah. Because they, I guess, I don't know, they had all that hope in front of them or that excitement of pursuing their success. Mm -hmm. And yeah didn't learn how to like appreciate it maybe once they got it hmm. yeah and I think <clears throat> I think there's probably a different level of camaraderie when you're going to shows where you're all on the show together you know because when you get to that level of stardom you're the headliner you might have a feature or an opener but not always when you're doing you know a you know 20,000 room venue or something you know mm -hmm. so there's there's probably some of that kind of loss and some of that connection with the crowd where you can't connect with everyone in the room when they're, you know, half mile away from you. And right. there's just probably pieces that I would imagine that you fall well, in love the with. Traveling and you're in a place where you don't know anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And that does, you know, I used to travel a lot for work. I, when I was in sales, I was traveling, I was at a point where I was traveling almost every other week for work and <clears throat> excuse me as fun as it was to kind of get out and have nice meals you kind of get burnt out on it because you're not really you're not going out with the people that you would want to go out with I mean I, I had a great group of people I worked with that we had fun but mm -hmm. it wasn't like oh I'm going out with my family or I'm taking my kids on an experience it's like well this is we're making we're having fun because we're together and I would I would hang out with them here I've hung out with some of them since I don't work there it's right. not awful but it was just like you know even like when I was married it's like oh I, my wife's not with me most of the time there are only a couple of times where she was able to go and um and at some point you're just tired of eating in restaurants all the time no matter how nice the restaurant yeah. is yeah <laughs> yeah you no know, or not sleeping in your own bed mm -hmm. so that makes sense but those are the days we're striving for <laughs> I know when we can look back and be like, remember when we were doing scrutiny from our own homes and we didn't have a studio yet? <laughs> I know. Remember, we didn't have hair and makeup to get us ready. We had to do it ourselves. Didn't even have to put pants on because nobody else was around. <laughs> now we don't have oh. to put pants on because we make our employees sign a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. Oh, uh, right. Oh, uh, that's funny. I know. Yeah. Well, I am working on some clean jokes because I that's I'm forcing myself to write a new clean joke every week and um, at least a part of a clean joke, but I can keep developing. So I've got to come up with what mine is going to be because Sunday is my deadline for that. Oh, so the last three or four weeks I've done that. 
And so we have, we have the open mic at Odd Otter on Sunday nights, which is 90, 95% music. Um, there was another guy who did comedy there last time and then, and I did some comedy. So I'm using that as my kind of benchmark to, okay, I'm going to, it's a small supportive room. It's an easy place to just try stuff. Uh So it, it kind of having that deadline forces me to, to do that because I do want to have, my goal is to have an hour of clean material, you know, right. that won't necessarily be in six months, but I want to just keep working it. So I'm always working on it. Mm-hmm. Good idea. So, but the dirty stuff is just easier. And, <laughs> and <laughs> when you have a dirty mind, it is, it is. Yeah. I was watching a comedian the other day. I think it was a Bill Burr episode on Netflix and oh. I haven't watched a lot of comedy on like the Netflix specials and stuff. Right. But I, there was a line in one of his shows where he made a comment about not doing certain types of, he's like, I don't like to do whatever kind of joke. And he was talking about race comparison jokes because his wife is black and so it's easy for him to talk about differences. Hang on, this is weird because you're talking, but your voice is like, I mean, your picture is frozen, but I can still hear you talking. Oh, interesting. Anyway, go ahead. It's like, uh, maybe, maybe somebody's, um, miming me or not what do you call it um ventriloquisting or <laughs> I mean, never mind <laughs> so um, anyway he said he didn't want to do yeah oh but he, he just said he doesn't he's like you know it's always this kind of thing and then he's like they always compare like this but but he, he called out the idea of what types of jokes in his opinion can just be very simple and lazy and or too easy and huh. it's interesting to hear somebody at that level talk about um being aware of not you know, of trying harder and working harder to come up with books, their skill to write. So, okay, now it looks like it's moving. Yeah, you're moving now. <clears throat> so, but it, it just made me, because I have tried to think about that. And it's like that post that you shared today about um, that, that you had read about just kind of being the best at no matter what it is that you're doing. That means you have to work harder, you have to try harder and you have to elevate your skill level to the point where you're not taking an easy road, even though other people are and might be getting partway down the road quicker, you're going to, you know, you're going to get so much further by not t- playing that game. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was interesting. I thought, God, we did everything like just at a level, like, you know, we're like, we're the master at everything that we do. Like just mm-hmm. imagine how much harder I would try at, at things. Cause right. I, yeah. I wouldn't say that I tried that hard. Like I try hard, I work hard, but Oh, you do. But you yeah. you are hustling left and right and you are like the hardest working person I know in comedy uh in so many ways when I look at how many times you're hustling, going to shows, going to things and not just the shows you're working, but the amount of time that you go supporting other comedians, making sure that you go to as many shows as you can when someone else is on it or going to shows to watch shows that are around comedy to keep learning. And, um, and all of that is, you know, there's so much more than just hustling to open mics to making comedy right. good yeah. and also learning the business of comedy because you not only do comedy, but you also produce rooms. So, so yeah, so there, I know I'm so hungry and it's like, Oh, I think we are planning on eating at the club tonight, but my stomach is saying we're eating now. So right. I don't know. That's always hard to gauge when there's shows because a lot of times I do plan to eat food there, but then, cause I want to support clubs and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, okay, well now I need to either eat a late lunch or a little snack. And yeah. <laughs> then so. we end up having three dinners and then, you right. know. And then the after show dinner at Denny is just like, just never stops. <laughs> I know I'm got I've got to put it I got to put the kibosh on that kind of stuff I've told myself that as soon as I got back from Vegas I was just gonna really you know I'm not gonna go on a diet I don't believe in that at all but I just thought I'm gonna cut out all this excess carbs and sugar that I've been eating mm-hmm. and then I think yesterday I had two candy bars so I haven't I haven't gone to the grocery yeah. store yet that's my excuse to really I get did. like well I did good yes I, I had a I shared a pizza with a client yesterday because I had a client meeting and it was kind of getting close to dinner time. So I just ordered a, a media, it wasn't a large pizza. So that was a reasonable size dinner and it was pizza. So it's not the best, but I didn't, I could have eaten the whole thing by myself. So that was, right. 
but the um, six beers that followed um, probably were a lot of carbs. <laughs> it wasn't like, I mean, it was six between three o'clock and 2 a.m. I mean, it wasn't like I just got wasted, but, <laughs> but I, I picked up another client last night. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go out and have a couple of drinks and I ran into friends and then it just ended up being longer. So uh -huh. it was a fun yeah. night, but I, I've been trying to be okay with um, selectively just not being like, no, I got to get back and get right back to work all the time. Cause that's what gets me stressed out and not performing well. All right. So. You know what I think we're going to do is we're going to send out a lot of invites for people to uh, like our scrutiny with Sherry and Andy page. Yes. Because so. that way, you know, it's like I, all your people don't need to come to my page and all my people, you know, don't need to come, you know, they yeah. need to come to a place that that's our page. So. Right. That's our space. Mm -hmm. So join us in the future on the scrutiny with Sherry and Andy page. Right. We'll get there. And then we're going to start sending people, you know, people can start liking and subscribing. We have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Now I got to, you know, I got to admit, I have not been a hundred percent perfect about loading everything onto it, but I, it's a work in progress. So okay. once we get it all caught up and everything's beautiful, like that's where everything's going to go. So um, the mm -hmm. show's just going to keep getting better and better and um, growing and growing. And so it's going to be fun and we're going to have more games and we're going to have some exciting uh, additions to the games. I, it's, it's fun to see it develop. We, you know, we met before we went to Vegas and figured out, you know, kind of, we're always doing what we can to adjust it. And I'm, I'm excited. All right. It's four fifty one. So. All right. It's been a fun show. Oh yeah. We were going to come up with a little tagline at the end. Oh yeah. Um, be scrutinous in your week. <laughs> Hello, Seattle. Yeah, so if you have an idea for our, a little tagline for us to end the show on, email us at scrutiny at. with Sherry and Andy at gmail.com. Isn't that a fucking fantastic that email is an address? Awesome email because you know exactly where it's going to. It's going to scrutiny with Sherry and Andy. How come we didn't do with Sherry and with Andy? Because we could have gotten another word in there. <laughs> Or how about the scrutiny show with Sherry and with Andy, which is sometimes on Facebook at gmail.com. Oh, well, next time we can, we can make a new. Oh, and new also as a podcast. Um, <laughs> that's true. Uh, no, that's exciting. Uh, yeah. Send us your ideas. We are looking forward to figuring out a tagline for the end of the show. And we came up with some ideas, but we weren't that excited about them. Yeah. So we'll come back next time to hear our twist of scrutiny or something. Right. Bye bye. Bye. Thank God. <laughs>